So we have learned basically everything there is to know about exponential functions, including the exponential function e and what that number is and what it re represents. And so we want to actually apply it. So we learned earlier about the compound interest formula, which is this here. But what happens if we were to compound it continuously? And so that would actually change our formula a little bit. If we were to compound it continuously, then that would give us this formula here. So when we look at things, if we compound them annually, that means it's once a year, quarterly, four times a year, monthly, 12 times a year, daily, 365 times a year. If we wanted to do it hourly, we would do 8,760 times a year. Well, now we have another option that we can compound it continuously, I means it is constantly compounded all the time. Okay, so we have an example here. Um, you should know all of the information that you need to know. The only thing is in part E, you're going to be using this formula here, and every other part you're going to be using your typical compound interest formula. Plug in the information that you know here, and you can figure out the amount at the end of this in every single one of these situations. So pause the video and see what amounts you come up with. So for parts A, B, C, and D, I'm going to be using this formula where my where my principal is $5,000, my rate is 0 0.065, n is the thing that's adjusting in this equation, and then our time was after 10 years. And so I might write this as 10n. So if I compound it annually, then my n is going to equal 1. So my amount is going to be 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.065 5 over 1 to the 10 times 1, or just 10. And so, if you plug this in your calculator, 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.065 to the 10 gives me $9,385.69. $9,385.69. What happens if we're going to compound it quarterly? So if we compound it quarterly, that means we are compounding it four times a year. So our n value is four. So you can see I have this typed in my calculator, and when I get this out, I get $9,527.79. So we can see if I go from annually to quarterly, I earn a couple of hundred dollars extra. What happens if I were to compound it monthly? Then I'm going to compound it 12 times a year. And so my formula is going to substitute in 12. You can see I have it plugged in my calculator. And so this time we get 95, 60, and 92 cents. 95, 60, and 92 cents. Daily means we're going to do it 365 times a year. And so using my calculator to determine this, we have 957715. And then the last one. If I want to compound it ten continuously, I'd actually be using my other formula. So I don't need an n value here because I don't need to know how many number of times it's compounded per year, it's just compounded continuously. So I have my initial amount times e to the 0 0.065, and then my t is in 10. So all I need to do now is type that in my calculator. 5,000, use my e function, 
0.065 times 10. Or if you could do your math in your head, that would be perfectly fine. And so we see we get 95.77 and 70 cents. And so we can see over the amount of 10 years, depending on how many times it's compounded, we can earn quite a bit more money. And so this is just the difference to say, what is it going to look like if I change my varying rate of how many times you compound it per year? The last thing that I want to discuss is applications is not actually an example, but just other places that you can see exponential functions. So we've talked about the growth of an investment under compound interest, or I've also mentioned if you borrowed money in student loans, this would also be the same way that the amount of money that you need to pay back would be figured. Something else that's typically determined by exponential functions is population growth. You know that you have large cities that seem to grow larger and larger and larger super fast. Well, that's what we talk about is exponential growth. So that's how we can see it as a growth function. As a decay function, something very easy to see is when you um, pour yourself a cup of coffee, coffee, it's super hot. And then a little while later, it's kind of mediocre hot. And then it seems like it gets cool really, really fast. Well, that's because it's defined by an exponential decay function. So the temperature of a cup of coffee decreases exponentially. Um, something that you might not see right offhand is if we're talking about a radioactive substance, it also decreases exponentially. And the same thought process of, these, of your temperature of your cup of coffee. And so this might define, if you've ever heard of things called half-life, this is what we're talking about here. And hopefully we'll see some examples of this in a different section along the way. And so I have finished up exponential functions and their graph.